Now I'm going to be tying a very simple canvas pattern and I'm going to be using a material for the body this year. This is just, this stuff is uh, used for sort of necklaces, bangles, stuff like that. You thread beads on it and it's really stretchy and, and strong. Now the size I'm using, one the size I like, you can get it in different sort of thicknesses, it's 0.8. You get it lots of different colours, uh, I mean I've got red, black, clear is really good. There's, I'll show you these other ones. There's a black there, um, the red, nice and bright. And obviously clear. Clear is a good one because you can practically tighten buzzers. I've tied a lot of buzzers on it. Now the, the body you get is really, really nice and very simple. You can, again, it could be, uh, as well as carriage, you can tie mayfly patterns, uh, anything. Now, who I'm using for this pattern is the full mill. It's the check nymph. It's a great hook, barbless hook. Uh, it's the black nickel version, which is colour it does really well for me. Now, you can weight the body with a lead, or you can, in this case, I want a medium weight to fly, and I'm going to be using just a copper wire. And all I'm going to do is start from, start about, say, I would say about, line with the point of the hook, and then just control, like winding it on like thread. I'm using a ceramic bobbin holder, so it helps, uh, basically, you can break that waste piece away. Um, to wind the, the, cop the copper wire, it doesn't sort of break. I'm just going to come back up. Now, winding down, uh, I need to, for it to taper up onto that. Now, what I'm going to do is come up past the area I started, then come back down halfway, and then come back up. What you're looking for is a good underbody, and then break that off. And there, that's just a, a, a medium weight added to the, the hook, just to give it and help to give it the shape. You'll save a bit of thread as well if you do that. Now you can coat it with a bit of varnish or some super glue which will help stop it rotating. So I'm using a super glue. This is a full mill super glue. Now best to actually sit, uh, I would say, and allow it to dry but I'm just going to carry on. So I would maybe sit and do half a dozen and then go back to them once I dry. Now that soaks right in. And then we start with thread at the eye, and then we come down. Use the waste piece to control, control the thread turns. Helps to, if you keep this tight, it'll control the turns, keep them closer. And then we work round to this point here, and then remove the waste. Now I'm going to come back up. All the way up. Then I'm going to get basically elastic cord, if you want to call it. Now it does stretch a lot, so what I'm going to do is going to catch in just slightly by the copper wire to help with the taper. And then what I do is stretch it and wind, I'm keeping it on my side. Stretch it as much as you can. You need to make sure your hook's well, it's held well in your vise, put it that way. Come right round, and then work your way back up. So you're in line with the point of the hook, which is there. You see the taper type shape, it's quite rough, but that's fine. That's what you want. You've got a bit of colour there as well. Now, nice and tight, bring that first turn round. And then touch and turns with the beading material and work your way up. You can see the shape that you get. You meet your thread, cross your thread, nice and tight. Then you start to work your way towards the eye, and then what I like to do is just come in at a slight, well, it's a straight cut really alongside the hook, which will give you a tapered cut. And then we just tighten onto this, work the way down. Come back up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some, this is ice dubbing. Now, this, this one's from Orvis. I'm just going to use a, some of it, uh, all of it. You can, there's quite a few different colours there. You can brighten up the back. Uh, I want to darken it down slightly, so I'm using the one they call Peacock. So just two or three strands, you don't need much. 
slightly dub it on and wind round. Even if you come slightly over that last turn of the beading material and then stroke it back. Break away, this all you can break away is if it's too long. I'm just gonna use my velcro just to bring out a wee bit more. Keep your thread out of the way when you do that. See how it looks. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change thread. You can colour the thread, it turns a, a colour of thread. I want a dark brown. So I'm going to start at the eye. The yellow, or the Cahill thread, as I used there, is an 8 from Uni, and this is a brown 8 It's to help keep the colour at the back, keep it nice, but you can see the how you get a kind of mix of colour with the materials you've used as you got, and that's what you're looking for. Now, I'm just going to put some wax on my thread to give me a wee bit more grip to come down a wee bit because it's starting to get quite steep. Now, I did wax the thread before I started, so i just add a wee touch more. Now, the legs, this is some partridge I've dyed. You can see that it's a grey partridge I've dyed brown. Now, there's a couple of ways you can put this on. You can just put a small V, cut it, or you could take some fibres off and attach it to either side. I usually just basically take a small V like that, and then get it the right length, like the tips of the fibres towards the back. Don't have to be too fussy with this. Get them to sit the way you want. When you're happy, you can trim away the waist. Again, tidy up. Now dubbing, I'm just going to use a squirrel dub, this one here. This is the SLF one, the Davy Watton version. It's just a, basically, it's a natural dubbing mix that he they, they produce. Uh, it's, I think Wopsy does it. Um, the colour I'm looking, I'm doing a brown. Now sometimes it's actually easier to dub. Take your thread down and dub up the way because of the taper. So what I've done here is just going to work my way up. Spinning, tightening the dubbing when I need to. And then I'm going to come back through it. Give yourself a good space at the head here at the moment because what I'm going to do is get my velcro and just brush back. Just watch your thread. The dubbing especially on the top. You can put horns on it if you want. Now I've got some brown, I've got sorry, uh, wood duck here. I'm just going to take a couple of fibres. You could use bronze mallard fibres, pheasant tail, it's up to yourself. I'm just going to stroke back these fibres. Just not too long with the horns. Tie them on the top. For strength, I usually just fold them back. Nice and tight. There's the waist ends there, just take your fingers. Just slip them back and then you can trim these away, or you can break them away. If you break them away you get a neat cut, but these are quite strong, the chances are you may, you may pull them out. Right. There we go. Simple caddis pattern, simple materials. Now I bought the, the beading cord. Uh, off of uh, eBay. There you go. Very simple pattern to tie. Just finish off a coat of varnish. Make sure there's no bits of hair coming over the eye. You can just touch it. If you fill up the eye, don't worry about it. You can always clear it out with a piece of wire or your dubbing needle. Or whatever you have lying in your desk, really. A wee bit of wire here, I'll just clean it out. There we go. Simple caddis pattern, tied with the beading cord. Uh, as I say, you can tie buzzers, you can tie nymphs, uh, sort of olives, stuff like that. You can see you get a great effect with that.